Okay, let's do number 11 here. So on this question, you'll notice that, uh, the put, let's put the variables across the top. So that's x, y, and z across the top. Down the side we put the electronics, the assembly, and the um, quality stuff. And just put in, just go back and put in the numbers. So it says uh, 3.2 hours of electronics, 2.8 assembly, 4. Point, oh, whoops, I'm doing this wrong. 2.8, 4.4. That it goes downward, huh? Because that's all X. And then next comes for Y, 3.4, and 3.8, and 3.2. And then for Z, 4.8, and 5.2, and 3.4. And then it says 356 hours for electronics. That goes over here because that's the electronics. And 358 for assembly. That's the assembly. And uh, 364 for the for the quality. Make that a big old matrix like that and do the R R E F thing and you'll get the answer D. There we go. Let's try number twelve. So number twelve. It's an investment problem. The uh, things are five percent, six percent, eight percent. So we want point oh five X, point oh six Y. Z. And what will that equal? Well, that's going to be the money earned. That's the 1600 1600 That's the um, income earned. The other one's the investment. How much was actually invested? Well, that's just X plus Y with Z. Total money invested, 25000 So you see on these investment problems, we always have the income, which involves the percentages, and the investment, which is just X, Y, and Z. And then the third equation is always the weird one. See what it says? The amount invested at five percent is double the amount at six. So that's saying x is double y because five percent is x and six percent is y. So they're saying x is double y. But if you want to make them equal, we want to write an equation. And if you know one's bigger, then you got to to make them equal. You got to double the little guys. So x. So we have x and y. And who's bigger? X is twice as big. So I got to double y to make them equal, right? They're saying the 5%, the x, is, is already twice as big. So if I want to make them equal, i got to double y. There's my third equation. Bring the 2y over, x minus 2y plus 0z. There's no zero. Uh, there's no z. So so there's there's my matrix. So here we go. 0 0.05 right here. 0 0.06, 0 0.08. 1,600. And 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. 25,000, and then 1 minus 2, 0, 0. There's a matrix, R, R, E, F. You'll get answer D. Let's go to 13. So number 13, this rental thing. So for, uh, so for Barney, first off, three days and 300 miles of his rental car came out for a charge of 108. Got to put the charges on the right, the money on the right. Whereas Mary, um, five days, 600 miles, came out a total of 192 was her charge. So basically it's two equations, two letters like that. Make your matrix, 3, 300, 108, 5, 600, 192, R, R, E, F. You'll get answer D. Your answer will come out 24 and I don't know what. D is the top one because D came first and then M. So the days are, it's $24 per day for the rental car. And that's what they want. So number 14. Um, this is just going to be put A and B into your graphing calculator. Do 4A plus B and get the answer for number 14. When you do all that and type all that in, you'll get answer C. It's this one. Let's go on to 15. Uh, find the interest rate needed, compounded quarterly. Oh, yeah, this is a tricky one. Uh, to be accumulated in five years, 
if this is invested in each quarter. So it's certainly an annuity because we're several payments, not just one payment. Um, to be accumulated means future value. Future value. And um, the we're investing at the end of each quarter, so that's ordinary. It's not annuity due. Annuity due is at the beginning of each quarter. Or, right, so now let's uh, grab the correct formula. So we're talking future value, ordinary annuity. I'll bring it up here. Let me get this out of the way and bring it up right here. S equals R. 1 plus R over N to the NT. Minus 1 over R over N, like that. So the little r is what we're looking for. Let's see what we get. The oh, the, the 1675 is the big r, and um, the little r is what we're looking for. This is quarter, so that's a, n equals four, four four payments per year. To the four times in t is five years. Over r over four. So um, oh, and and for thirty eight thousand be cumulative. So my s is thirty eight thousand. Okay, so there it is. That is super hard to solve. How are you going to solve that? Got to use your graphing calculator. Make this x, and let y one be the left side. Let y2 be the right side, 1675. And you're going to have to use double parentheses here. One parenthesis, another parenthesis. Inside there, 1 plus x divided by 4. There's my x divided by 4. To the power of 20, that's, that's just 20, minus 1. Like that. Now this denominator, I'm going to bring this up. I'm going to go times 4 over x, right? Just flip it upside down. Dividing is upside down multiplying. Times 4 divided by x. That's y2. So you've got to put that in for y1 and for y2 into your graphing calculator. And then you've got to graph it. But this is hard to do correctly. When you graph it, here's a couple tricks. To find the y, you're going to have to do second table, and that'll tell you that your y max should be, I don't know, something bigger than 38,000, like maybe 50,000. That'll tell you how high your y values need to go to see the graph. And and the x values are tricky, too. you got to make your x min 0 and your x max 1. Why? Because x right here represents interest rates, and rates are decimals. So you just want x to go from 0 to 1, your y max 50,000. Graph it, and then after you do, choose intersect. And when you do, here's the answer you'll get for x, which is actually the interest rate. It will be, here let me make sure I'm doing it. Yep, and my window is right. Yep, graph it. Find the intersect routine. And the answer I'm getting for it is point O five two two three. We'll move that two places. Five point two two three percent, which is none of the above. It's it's just not there. Five point two two three percent. All right, that's tricky. Let's move on. Okay, so number 16 is an APY problem, annual percentage yield. How do we do annual percentage yield? Well, annual percentage yield, what it means is the interest earned, the actual yield in a year, annual, one year. Meaning, you might think, well, it's 6%. Well, not really. 6% if you compound it daily will come out a little better than 6%. So it's figuring out what will actually happen to your money in one year. It's going to be a little higher than 6%. How do you do it? You let P be $1, T be one year, and then step two, when you get your answer, you subtract the original $1 
because you just want the gain. So here we go. We're using the compound interest formula because that's what's happening. We're just putting in money for one year, one time. P1 plus R over N. That's a funny looking R there. To the NT. Plug that in. So the amount will be P, $1. Interest rate is 6%. Over in 365 compoundings in a year, one year, T is one year. So hit the buttons on your calculator, and let me see what you get. I'm getting 1.06183. So subtract out the original dollar, because all you want is the gain. You're saying $1 went up to one dollar and six cents and some stuff so here's the gain here's the interest it actually earned turn that back into a percentage six point one eight three percent that's the gain that's what the six percent actually did it paid a little better than six percent that answer is not there it's none of the above on number sixteen as well so that's it's kind of tricky so number seventeen this is just multiply two matrices, so just put that in your calculator, put that in your calculator, hit the buttons, you'll get that answer. Multiply the matrices. Okay, number 18. Compound amount, 140,000 compounded quarterly. So there, this is not regular payments, this is just the compound interest formula. To the NT, that's an R there. So um, find the compound amount for the deposit. So find the amount. <clears throat> the deposit is 140000 That's the principal. The interest rate, 0 0.0147 over N. N is, well, I don't know. Um, um, compound, oh, quarterly, right there, N is 4. I didn't see that. And the time is 5 years. So hit the buttons on your calculator. You'll get answer D on that. Let's move on to number 19. 19 is just put it in your in big old matrix in your calculator. 3 minus 5 sevenths, 10, 2 thirds, and minus 9 sevenths, 19 fifths, and hit R, R, E, F, and you'll get the answer, which is actually down below here. It's D, which is Y equals minus Seven fifths. That's the answer for number 19. Okay, so number 20. 20 is an REF answer, reduced row echelon form answer. And they're saying, what does it mean? Well, to remember that, you got to remember X is the first column, then Y, then Z, then W. So let's write out what these are saying. That first one's saying 1X plus 3W equals 13. The second one's saying 1Y equals negative 9. Third one saying 1z minus 2w equals 4. The, th the fourth one saying 0 equals 0. That's true, but not very useful, so we just ignore it. it yeah, 0 equals 0, that's true. So it's not false. Now, if that said 0 equals 1, that would be false, and we would choose none of the above. It's no solution. But if it's true, but unimportant, we just ignore it. So what do we do then? Solve for x. Move this over, so x will be 13 minus 3w. y is already done. For z, move this over. z equals 4 plus 2w. That's answer b. I believe on that one, 13 minus 3w minus 9, 4 plus 2w. There it is on that one. So there is number 20.